This is Six Live in the booth at HPE Discover Las Vegas 2025. I'm Will Townsend. I manage the networking and security practices for more insights and strategy. I'm joined by David Hughes. David hey, leads overall product for uh, for the HPE Aruba business unit. David, it's great to be chatting today. Yeah, no, really good to be here. Awesome. I loved your keynote this morning, but I got to tell you, I'm sad that Dan the Man is no longer with us. Oh yeah, well, I, I you know we had a lot to pack in there. Yeah. And uh, something had to go. I hear you. Um, the uh, the demos were super insightful. I, I learned a lot, and congratulations and. There are a lot of announcements to talk about, but I want to start with the Gentic AI Mesh. And this is Aruba Networking's basically um, uh, both generative and a Gentic AI offering. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, no, I'm, it's really, really exciting. So what we're doing is applying Gen a Gentic AI to um, the networking operator's uh, job. And if you think about it, what a Gentic AI does is it gives the IT team some extra IT members that are working, you know, day in, day out while they're sleeping. Yeah, Antonio um, said during the keynote, like while you're sleeping, you know, while you're eating, like they're they're working behind the scenes, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So in the in the architecture there's a co-pilot that most people are familiar with. Sure. Which, which is kind of prompted by the admin, right? So the admin types something the co-pilot answers. What's really unique about uh, Agentic AI is we have a separate LLM another very large LLM with the reasoning and action capabilities, and it's headless. It's sure. prompted by things like network events, like maybe it detects some kind of anomaly, and then that triggers a root cause analysis and then any remediation actions. And that, that um, reasoning agent is able to access via mesh many, many sub-agents, each of those sub-agents specializing in a different thing, like maybe link health or Ident identity information or documentation or bug records. Right. And the agentic um, um, multi-agent orchestrator is able to ask all those questions, correlate all that information, and then assemble a chain of thought. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what happened. This is the steps I took to understand what the root cause was. So this is the root cause. Here's two or three ways you could address it, the pros and cons of each and here's what I recommend you do. Sure. And then it gives that back to the co-pilot who presents it to uh, the network operator who can decide, you, yes, this makes sense. I trust AI, I'm just yeah. gonna say yes. Or maybe like many people, they wanna double check so they can look through that line of reasoning and say, right. yeah, this makes sense. I'm gonna go with it. Sure. Um, so I think it, it's going to be, it's, to me, it's bigger than generative. Generative gave us a nice natural language interface last year. This really um, augments the IT team with extra resources that go run things down. It would take hours otherwise, um, and then assembles it in a way like you know if you had a, a new uh, a new grad admin, yeah. you give them a job. They come to you. Here's what I discovered. You're going to read it and then say yes, no. Um, it's like that, but you're getting it. Um, you're getting it as we said while you're sleeping. So I think it's a real game changer. I, I believe it is too. Uh, it's going to drive automation at scale. It's going to work very nicely with your OpsRamp integration as well. And you talked about that today, the observability of not only HPE infrastructure, but multi-vendor inf infrastructure as well, right? But um, my understanding is that what you're doing with the Agentic AI Mesh is part of sort of a larger vision that the company has around uh, GreenLake intelligence. And so can yes. you talk a little bit about that and how the two fit together? Absolutely, that, that they're almost one and the same. Yeah. So what we've demonstrated is kind of using this Agentic AI mesh within the networking domain. But our vision is to do this across HPE, and that's what we call GreenLake Intelligence. Mm -hmm. So imagine that that co-pilot and that uh, multi-agent orchestrator are running at the HPE level. And as well as talking to the sub-agents I discussed, they're thinking about our multi-agent orchestrator is one sure. sub-agent of that agent right. and a storage agent and a uh, compute agent, a workloads-based agent, um, each of which then may have more sub-agents. Right. But you've got all these, all of this information, all these agents working together in a mesh, and uh, then you're able to kind of answer and troubleshoot across domains. Mm -hmm. You know, I think back to the multi-vendor piece, you know, right. I think what's really key there, especially with OpsRamp, is being able to get the telemetry in from all different vendors and across domains. Otherwise, 
even if you're doing a good job, you're only looking at a slice of the network or a slice of the problem. Right. Um, so, uh, of course, I'm very excited about it inside the networking domain as my sure. business, yeah. but it's going to have a big effect as we also bring bring it to life across HP and the whole portfolio. Um, I believe it will too. And again, what it's going to do, it's going to reduce those gaps in visibility, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's going to improve network assurance uh, uh, as a result. Yeah. And it's going to improve security posture. And I know that you're very focused on a security first architecture. Yeah. And I'm going to go a little off script, but you talked about zero trust today as well. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you're doing to improve zero trust? With yeah, you? for us, um, you know, zero trust there's sort of two very important technologies. One is the SSE and SASE piece, right. where you're providing policy that applies to users and users' identities and applications are allowed to access and then potentially with things like CASB, what they're able to do with that application. Sure. Um, so we've invested there and we're on a uh, path towards tighter and tighter integration. Mm -hmm. The other piece is what do you do about devices? Because device identity is different than human identity. Mm -hmm. and they're accessing services and data versus accessing applications, the IoT devices. And so what we're doing is evolving what we've done with network admission control, where we're able to identify different classes of IoT devices, continuously monitor them, track their behavior, and then apply policy, which can be implemented on-prem um, versus in the cloud. Sure. And so as we bring that kind of zero trust for devices and zero trust for people um, together, yeah. you know, that's what we call universal CTNA, and it's uh, an area that's of um, particular focus for us. Yeah, I mean, it's powerful infusing networking and security together. I think yeah. today you talked about it's not a bolt-on, because when you bolt on a security solution, it creates gaps, right? And so I really like what the company is doing there. Now, I know that what you've announced this week is in customer preview, and I believe it's going to be generally available in third quarter of this year, but can you speak to some of uh, the applications and use cases for AI Mesh? Yeah, well, it's, it's super flexible because it's yeah. very, very powerful generic technology. Um, but, you know, it's two examples. Um, one is, you know, the example I showed where there's a, a problem where the users are experiencing some, experiencing some latency when they roam. That's the problem. That's actually um, determined using our classic AI, traditional AI, it figures there's an anomaly in the performance. That's what triggers that multi-agent orchestrator to go off and start digging into what's going on. And it realizes that, hey, there's a problem with this class of device, and this class of device based on our bug database is incompatible with 802.11r, I'm getting technical on you. But it, that, that's the thing, it can dig into all this stuff. Yeah and figure out that you know we should maybe turn that off, but this would be the cons, but on balance, it makes sense. So there, that example is going in really, really deep on wireless troubleshooting and remediation. Mm -hmm. But the same technology is equally able to drill down to a switching problem or an SD-WAN problem. And another example um, that I think you might see on the booth over there is uh, there's some users that are experiencing um, poor experience with an app. and that's what triggers it. And it, the root cause in that case is that on the WAN gateway, not enough bandwidth had been assigned to that particular application class. And so the recommendation was to increase it. So it really, um, it's really, really very powerful. And yeah. you know, one of the things I think that, that really excites me is that people have been afraid of AI, generative AI in particular, because they don't understand how it gets its answer. You know, it's not explainable. Sure. Agentic AI um, gives you that explanation. And right. what's really cool is, uh, or I really like to, is the way we embed all the graphs and everything in that flow. So, you know, in a user interface, oftentimes people want to do all different things with it. So you end up with a lot of controls so that, say, someone can get a chart yeah. of anything and you end up kind of reinventing burst or whatever inside or your UI. It really includes you and yeah. navigate, right? But with, 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 um, with AI and generative AI even, you can describe the chart you want right. and you can kind of generate it on the fly without having to have it fit into sure. a part of a UI. It can kind of be more in a, yeah. in a workflow, in a document type flow. So right. that's um, what we're seeing there with that, with that reasoning agent, generating like a workbook 
um, of all the things it's done. So it's not behind the scenes anymore. Yeah. It's, it's front and center, right? Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, that's a that's a that's an interesting observation. Well, David, as we wind up our conversation, I want to talk about the importance of data. Yeah. Uh, data feeds these large language models and small language models, and HPE has a tremendous data lake. Can you spend a little bit of time talking about that and the advantage that you bring with your solution? Because there are competing solutions out there. Yeah, so um, with Aruba Central now, we're managing about 6 million um, devices, that's APs and switches. Yeah. And then attached to them are about 3 billion, um, billion um, endpoints. So it's phones and laptops and IoT it's devices. It's pretty mind blowing when you think about yeah. the number. <laughs> and then for those, every, every minute we're collecting telemetry. Telemetry relative to the operation of the networking device, but also the experience of the people on those clients. Um, so more than a trillion data points a day, which we stream in through Central, we anonymize that and place it in a data lake. Mm -hmm. And then that data lake is um, really the foundation that we use to learn against, to be able to kind of do fleet learning across all our customers, have the AI identify by itself, you know, what are best practices, what are poor practices, yeah. how can um, I take learnings overall from the fleet and apply them um, to individual customers to give them a better experience. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're trying to identify IoT devices, you're able to do it across this huge data set. It's a much uh, easier problem. So, you know, as I said in my chat, really the telemetry is the lifeblood of AI ops. And that's also why we, we're so excited to be able to partner with OpsRamp um, and bring the third party telemetry in because sure. the third party telemetry now goes into the data lake and it gives us an ability. It enriches to, everything, yeah, right? Exactly. We can send a full topology versus just a slice of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I followed the company for many, many years. I, I knew Kurti and Partha many, many years ago. Uh, we met when, when you joined uh, as well. And um, you're very credible in this space from my perspective because you've been a leader in AI ops. When you look at your edge services platform dating back a couple of years ago and just what you've done continuously with, with machine learning and, and with AI, um, I think the future is very bright, David. So I want to thank you for taking the time yep. to chat with me. It's been great. And I want to thank our viewers for tuning in. This is 6.5 in the boot at HPE Discover 2025. There's lots of more content out there, so stay tuned. Thank <laughs> you.